In this video, we will discuss about some important questions on basics of computer hardware, module 1 of C programming. Question number 1. Write short note on processor and memory in a computer. The processor, also known as the central processing unit, is known as the brain of a computer system. It interprets and executes instructions, enabling the computer to carry out a wide range of tasks. The CPU comprises three key components, the control unit, which manages the data flow and ensures correct instruction execution order and coordinate other system operations. The arithmetic logic unit, the ALU handles arithmetic and logic operations which are fundamental to all computational tasks. Registers are small, fast storage units within the CPU that hold data temporarily during execution. The computer memory refers to the electronic components that store information in a computer. Computer memory can be classified into two main categories, the primary memory and the secondary memory. Primary memory, often known as the main memory, is the computer's short-term memory. There are basically two types of primary memory, RAM and ROM. RAM, the random access memory, is volatile. That means its data will be lost when the power is switched off. It is used to temporarily store data that the computer is actively using. It allows the CPU to quickly access and manipulate the data. ROM or read-only memory is non-volatile memory. It is used to store firmware or software that boots up the computer. Secondary memory on the other hand is non-volatile and provides long-term storage solutions. Unlike primary memory, secondary memory retains its data even when the computer is powered off. This category includes storage mediums like hard drives, solid state drives, optical disks and other external storage devices. Its capacity is larger than primary memory, making it suitable for storing large volumes of data, software and system files. Question number 2. Explain in detail about the architecture of a computer hardware with suitable diagram. The architecture of a computer hardware refers to the design and organization of various components that make up a computer system. These components work together to execute instructions, store and process data and provide input and output capabilities. Figure below shows the basic architecture of a computer. It has got a CPU memory input output unit and all these units are connected through control bus address bus and data bus a detailed explanation of the architecture is given below the central processing unit the cpu is the brain of the computer and is responsible for executing instructions it consists of two main components the control unit and the arithmetic logic unit the control unit is responsible for fetching instructions from the memory decoding them and controlling the operations of other comp components. ALU performs arithmetic calculations and logical operations required by the instructions. Memory. Memory is used to store data and instructions that the CPU need to access during program execution. There are several types of memory in a computer system. Random access memory or RAM. It is volatile memory that stores data and instructions temporarily while the computer is running. ROM is fast but loses its content when the power is turned off. ROM, read-only memory. It stores firmware and permanent instructions that are not modified during normal operation. ROM retains its content even when the power is turned off. Cache memory. It is a small high-speed memory located close to the CPU used to store frequently accessed data for faster retrieval. Secondary storage. This includes hard disk drives, solid state drives and other external storage devices that provide long-term storage for data even when the power is turned off. Input-output devices. Input-output devices allow users to interact with the computer and exchange data with the external world. Input devices receive data from the user or external sources and transmit it to the computer. Examples include keyboard, mice and microphones. Output devices display or present data processed by the computer. Examples include monitors, printers and speakers. System bus. 
The system thus is a communication pathway that connects the CPU, memory and I.O. devices. It allows for the transfer of data, instructions and control signals between these components. The system bus consists of three main types of buses. Address bus. It carries memory address specifying the location of data or instructions. Data bus. It carries the actual data being transferred between components. Control bus. It carries control signals that coordinates, synchronize the actions of various components. Case number three. What are the functions of ALU and CU? The arithmetic logic unit and the control unit are integral components of central processing unit in a computer system. The arithmetic logic unit performs two main types of operations. The arithmetic operations including addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and logical operations such as AND, OR, NOT, XOR and comparison functions like equal, greater than and less than. Essentially, the ALU handles the mathematical and logical operations of a computer CPU. The control unit. The functions of control unit are instruction fetch. The control unit fetches the instruction to be executed from memory. Instruction decode. After fetching the instruction, the control unit decodes it to determine which operations need to be performed. Instruction execution. The control unit directs the appropriate parts of the CPU to execute the instruction. This might involve activating the ALU, reading a value from memory or storing a value to memory. Sequencing. The control unit manages the sequence of operation ensuring tasks are carried out in the correct order. This includes directing which instruction should be fetched next. Control signals. The control unit sends out control signals to different parts of the CPU and computer to manage operations. For instance, it might send a signal to memory to fetch a value or to the ALU to carry out an addition. Timings. The control unit coordinates the timing of operations using clock pulses. It ensures that various parts of the CPU act synchronously. Next question. List five important registers in CPU. Also state the purpose of each register. Registers are small, high-speed memory locations within a central processing unit that temporarily hold data and instructions during program execution. Here are five important registers in a CPU along with their purposes. Program counter. It holds the address of the next instruction to be fetched and executed by the CPU. As instructions are fetched, the Program counter increments to point to the subsequent instruction. Instruction register. It stores the instruction currently being executed. Once the instruction is fetched from the memory, it is loaded into the instruction register where it gets decoded and executed. Accumulator. The accumulator is a central register used for arithmetic and logic operations. It temporarily holds the results of arithmetic and logic operations performed by the ALU. Memory Address Register It holds the address of the memory location where data will be fetched from or written to. When the CPU needs to access memory, it loads the desired address into the Memory Address Register. Memory Data Register the memory data register temporarily holds data that is being transferred to or from memory. When reading from memory, it holds the data fetched and waiting to be processed by the CPU. When writing to memory, it holds the data waiting to be saved to the specified location. Next question, explain different types of memory used in a computer. Memory in a computer refers to the hardware components that store data and programs that are needed for processing tasks. There are different types of memory and each serves a unique purpose. Random access memory. It is a type of volatile memory, meaning it loses its data when the power is turned off. It is used to store data and instructions that are currently being used or processed by the CPU. It can be thought of as the computer's working memory. Types of random access memory include dynamic RAM which stores each bit of data in a separate capacitor requiring periodic refreshing to maintain the data and static RAM which is faster and more expensive than DRAM uses flip-flops to store data and doesn't need refreshing. Read-only memory. ROM contains permanent instructions, firmware and system data required for the computer's initial boot-up and basic operations. It is a type of non-volatile data that retains data even when the power is turned off. Types of ROM include ROM or programmable read-only memory. 
It can be programmed once by the user and then becomes read-only. EEPROM Erasable Programmable Read-only Memory It can be erased usually with ultraviolet light and reprogrammed multiple times. Electrically Erasable Programmable Read-only Memory It can be erased and reprogrammed electronically. Cache Memory Cache Memory is high-speed volatile memory situated between the CPU and main memory. It stores frequently used data and instructions reducing the time the CPU need to fetch them from main memory. Types of cache memory include L1 cache located on the CPU chip and is the fastest and the smallest cache. L2 cache larger than L1 and can be on the CPU or nearby on, on a separate chip. L3 cache larger than L2 and shared by all CPU cores, slower than L1 and L2 but faster than main memory. Secondary storage are non-volatile memory devices that store data on a long-term basis even when the power is off. Its type include the hard disk drives, which are magnetic storage devices with spinning disk, solid state drives, uses flash memory and have no moving parts, making them faster and more durable than hard disk drives. Optical drives like devices like CD, DVD and Blu-ray players and burners. Flash drives Portable storage devices also based on flash memory. Virtual memory. It is a memory management capability of an operating system that uses a combination of RAM and disk space to allow the execution of larger programs on multiple applications simultaneously. If RAM become full, less used items are moved to disk storage in a space called the swap space or page file. Registers. Registers are small high-speed storage locations within the CPU used to hold temporarily data and instructions that are currently being executed. These are the main types of memory in a computer system. Next question, with the help of a neat diagram, explain the functional units of a computer. A computer system consists of various components, each having a specific function. These components can be broadly classified into functional units. Here are the primary functional units of a computer. So this is a block diagram showing the functional units of a computer, the input unit, the storage unit, the CPU and the output unit. The input unit is responsible for capturing data from external sources and presenting it to the computer in a form it can process. Devices like keyboard, mice, scanners, touchscreen, etc. are part of input unit. They take data from a user or another device and translate it into electrical signals for the computer to understand. The output unit converts data from the computer into a human readable format or a format suitable for other devices. Devices such as monitors, printers, speakers and other peripheral output devices become part of output unit. Storage unit. Storage devices are used to store data and instructions temporarily or permanently. This unit provides the computer with its own space. There are two main types of storage, primary storage and secondary storage. The primary storage or the primary memory consists of RAM or random access memory. It acts as the computer's working memory. It provides space for the computer to read and write data to be accessed by the CPU quickly. The data stored in RAM is volatile, meaning it gets erased when the power is turned off. There are different types of RAM such as DRAM and SRAM, each having its characteristics and uses within a computer system. Read-only memory. This is a non-volatile memory used to store firmware or data that should not be changed. The data stored in ROM remains even after the computer is shut down. Examples include PROM, EEPROM, and EEPROM. Secondary storage provides long-term storage for data and software. Unlike primary memory, it retains its content even when powered off. Hard drives, SSDs, optical drives, flash storage, cloud storage, etc. are examples of secondary storage. The central processing unit is often referred to as the brain of the computer. It consists of two primary components, the arithmetic logic unit and the control unit. The arithmetic logic unit performs all arithmetic operations and logical operations. The control unit coordinates and manages the activities of all other hardware components in the computer. It fetches, decodes and executes instructions from the memory. Bus system. It acts as a communication pathway for transferring data and instructions between different components of a computer. It consists of various types of buses such as address bus for carrying address of the memory location, 
data bus for carrying the data to be processed and the control bus which carries the control signals. These functional units collaboratively to process data, execute instructions and perform tasks in a computer system. So these are uh, some of the important questions. Thank you.